Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric, and today we're talking all about mushroom compost and how to use it in your garden. Okay, for all you guys that are coming back that have seen some of my videos that follow me a little bit, uh, welcome back. It's always great to see you again. To people that are new to my channel, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Eric, and I am starting one of the most ambitious gardening projects I've ever done in my life. I've never really grown in more than 100 square feet. This year, I've got close to 1,000 to 1,500 uh, square feet. I put up a greenhouse inside and outside of my house to get seedlings started early, and uh, we're going to see how well we go. But like I said, today's video is all going to be about mushroom compost, how to use it, how I use it, and what it's made out of and what the process is. Now, I know a lot of people don't know what mushroom compost is. They've never even heard of it before, and that's fine, okay? Just a little bit about what mushroom compost is. Now, mushroom compost is a byproduct of the mushroom cultivation, cultivation industry. They create these fruiting blocks made of hay, straw, grains, sawdust, and they grow mushrooms in it. And after the mushrooms are done fruiting and they have cultivated the mushrooms, this is what's left over. It gets put into a big pile or it gets sold to a place like Yard, New Jersey, okay? And they go ahead and they mix horse manure, uh, chicken manure, and gypsum to it. And they let it break down. They let it come up to a, a temperature that is going to kill off all the seedlings in here. <clears throat> Not only will the composting process kill off any seeds or, or anything else that's in this soil, it is also steam pasteurized before it is composted to make sure that there are nothing, nothing in there that you don't want for your garden. The mushrooms take nutrients out of the soil that your plants aren't going to use and they're going to leave the nutrients that we do need, okay? So basically what these mushroom farmers do is either they will have long beds, okay, of organic matter for the mushrooms to grow in or they will create what's called a fruiting block. Now, these fruiting blocks can be made out of a lot of different things. They can be made out of hardwood sawdust. They can be made out of uh, grains like rye grains or sorghum or, or anything else. Now, I want to say with this mushroom uh, compost, uh, and this is not a sponsored video, I called the place where I got this from. It's called theyardnewjersey.com in Clark, New Jersey, and I emailed them and I called them, and they were fantastic enough that they had this information right at the top of their fingers. They didn't have to go searching for it. They didn't have to go digging for it. I knew that they had it. Well, I knew that they were telling me the truth about what's in this because they already had the information readily available. Post here is comprised of 30, 37% hay, 6% corn cobs, 2% cocoa shells, 7% cottonseed holes, 13% poultry manure, which is great because they scrape that up with, with the hay and the bedding, okay, and they mix it all in. 2% uh, of gypsum, which helps uh, with the pH and condition of the compost, the decomposition of the compost, and it helps it uh, stay light and airy and not stick together like clay. And they also do 23% of horse manure in this so it's not just mushroom compost they did add okay the poultry manure the gypsum and the horse manure in order to get this up now that being said you want to know what the mpk is okay well the end the nitrogen is 2.75 the potassium is 1.5 and the potash is 1.5 this makes for an ideal growing condition for when you first start your plants. Yes, I know that those numbers are low, especially compared to synthetic fertilizers that are a 555, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. But the thing is, because there is so much organic matter in this, okay, it's not bioavailable to plants right away, but that also means it will not leach out of the soil and it will continue to be available for your plants during the entire growing season, which is a lot better than just spot fertilizing with a 10-10-10 uh, of a synthetic fertilizer that's going to wash away at the first rain, leach out of your soil, 
go into your groundwater and and possibly contaminate not just your water but every other person's groundwater around here now i don't have well water so i don't even have to worry about that too much with uh synthetic fertilizers but i refuse to use them anyway because i do not believe that they are good for your garden yes you will get a good snap of uh, tomatoes or corn and, and and a steady growth but you have to continually add it the worms in the soil do not like synthetic uh, uh fertilizers they will run from your garden i'd rather have uh something like this that's going to attract worms to my garden they're going to burrow through create castings and fertilize some more now this is full of organic matter matter of fact it's almost 100 percent organic matter for I have a two square mile town. Please has to come racing down the street at 100 miles an hour. I don't know where he's got to go that's so far away. Because of the high organic matter contents in this compost, it's going to do two things for you when it comes to moisture. In dry and drought situations, it's going to help to uh, retain all that moisture to have consistent watering with your plants, which is very important. But also, it's going to help during wet weather, it's going to help drain your, your compost so your plants don't get waterlogged. Now, this is a great soil amendment. Okay, If you have sandy or gravelly soil, this is going to act like a sponge to soak up that moisture and keep it in and allow you to be able to grow in some of the most hospitable types of soil that you may find in your you know, backyard garden. Also, if you have a clay soil, it is going to uh, help break up that clay soil and make it uh, a lot more airier and not clog up your roots. I cheat sheet because I don't want to get this information wrong, okay? Um, now, this was a beautiful thing. I really, when I asked them for information about this compost, I did not expect them to, to, to give me this amount of information uh, and, and everything. So this compost here was used at Penn State University, Penn State University's agricultural uh, department. Okay, and they, through their experiments, have said they have seen a 20% higher yield in corn during normal weather conditions, a 60% yield higher yield during drought conditions. Their broccoli and their cabbage had a 13% and 17% higher yield respectively with increased head diameter of the broccoli and the cabbage. Their tomatoes had a 28% higher yield, better development and avoids cracks and blemishes. And here's the kicker on fruit production they saw a 74% higher yield just from using mushroom compost. I am not using this as a soil amendment. I'm actually going to use this as my soil altogether. Now, the reason for this was when I had 100 square feet of gardening space, it wasn't really that big of a deal for me to go and, you know, buy a bunch of bags of topsoil, a bunch of bags of organic, uh, you know, uh, gardening soil, throw it all in, mix it up, um, amend it a little bit, and be done with it. But with a, a thousand to fifteen hundred square feet of growing space, that was really going to drive my budget through the roof and take up money that I wanted to do other things with. So I started calling around all of New Jersey to see where there was where I could get bulk compost. And believe it or not, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I've never bought bulk compost like this. This was seven cubic yards. I took a bunch of this out already. Um, so there's probably about six cubic yards here. I paid $38 per cubic yard. A little bit on the pricey side, but not for what I got. There, they did have a delivery charge that was $80. That was definitely a lot higher than I was hoping to pay for delivery charges. Um, 
what what can you do? Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. So in, in my search for a compost, there was nobody that had any that produced any that was willing to deliver any. Um, I found a couple companies that were willing to deliver me compost if I was willing to get 25 cubic yards. Now, I don't have a farm. I have a backyard garden. There's no way I would have been able to get rid of 25 cubic yards of compost uh, until I found theyardnewjersey.com and I said, hey, I need seven cubic yards of compost. And they said, well, we have this great mushroom soil compost that's fantastic. And I said, I've used mushroom compost before because I grow my own mushrooms and I have my fruiting blocks and they're full of sawdust and they're full of greens and everything that's in there is organic. And I wish I had one to show you, but before I even decided to film this video, I had already buried my old fruiting blocks in the garden. So allowing them to compost down. So, all right, everyone. I didn't even realize I had one left to show you. Now, this was one of my fruiting blocks that I made uh, for reishi mushrooms. I grew reishi mushrooms on this last year. I'll try to throw up a picture for you. But as you can see, okay, it's a block, it's a solid block. And what did I use with this? I used, um, I used wood chips, I used sawdust, hardwood sawdust, and I used rye grain when I grew my reishi mushrooms in this. It has done fruiting. This is typically what a reishi, but it broke off. It, usually they're a lot longer, like 10 to 12 inches longer, but that's a reishi mushroom. I hope you can see that um, in the garden. Like I said, the rest of my gardening blocks I had already buried. I didn't even realize I had this one left. And so this one is going to one of going into one of my garden beds. I'm gonna break it all up, take it out of this plastic, of course, and mix it in and let that compost down at the bottom layer of my garden bed. I'm really happy that I had an example to show you of what a mushroom fruiting block is before they let it degrade down and compost. So I contacted the yard, New Jersey, and they said, sure, no problem, seven cubic yards. When do you want it delivered? Tomorrow, no problem. Where do you want it? Your driveway, no problem. They came, they called me, they said, hey, we're here at your house, I was at work, we're gonna drop this off in your driveway and be done, and I said, that's fantastic, thank you so much. I finally found a source with great mushroom compost that I'm going to use in my garden bed. Now, like I said, they, their paperwork said it typically comes in at 6% pH. All right, so what I have here is a little simple pH tester that you just kind of whack into the ground and it gives you a relative pH. It's not super accurate. I don't know if you can see that very bottom line, but it's locked definitely right on that seven as a neutral soil. Uh, that's a, a very little cheap, quick identifier to see if, you know, the soil is way off. So I have my pH testing kit and I'll do a whole video on the pH testing kit. So I did decide to go right ahead and test this uh, compost and it, it came right in at 6.4. That is perfect. So if I mix that with my native soil, which I know is a 6.8, it's gonna end up somewhere around the 6.5, 6.6. I'm very happy with that. It's gonna make my eggplants, my peppers, and my tomatoes do absolutely wonderful. Let me bring you in and show you the consistency of what this mushroom compost is. Now, as you can see, it does have little sticks and pieces of hay and straw that still haven't completely 100% broken down. But if I keep on digging through this, the moisture content in here is perfect. Look, I can squeeze it. No water drains out. It clumps up but then breaks apart easily. That's exactly what I want to see. If I keep on going down here, I'm going to find uh, worms in here. That's how I know that this compost has been properly treated. It's not hot. When compost breaks down, the soil temperature, the compost temperature can reach anywhere from 110 to 160 degrees. So if you are digging through your compost and it is steaming, okay, or very warm to the touch, 
it is not completely fully broken down yet and you don't want to use it because it will kill your plants. Now this compost, I'm digging through, it's a little warm when I get down, but still cool to the touch, a lot cooler than my body temperature, which I absolutely love. And there are worms in it, so I know that this compost is ready to use. If it is hot when you get it, which I would, if you bought it from the yard, New Jersey, okay, in Clark, it's gonna be completely broken down. Now they assured me that this compost was produced under strict con control parameters, okay? Every ingredient that went in here, that's how they have those percentages because they know exactly what they put in here. They control it, they, they put the thermometers in it, they test the, um, the, the temperature of it, they know when it drops, they know when it's good, they know how long to let it sit. So I am confident with this mushroom compost that it is going to do fantastic in my garden. That's it for today's video on mushroom compost. I hope I educated you just a little bit. I hope I encouraged you to maybe find a local mushroom farm that has this and you it might be able to go out and pick it up for free. I don't know where you live, but I know I tried to look around for a mushroom cultivator that I could get this for free, and I couldn't find one here in New Jersey, but I don't know where you live, and you may be able to find one, and they'd be more than willing to just give this stuff to you because it's a byproduct. It's it's end-use product for the mushroom industry. They don't want it anymore, so unless they're selling it to a garden store or someplace like the yard, they may just give it to you for free. You can take it back to your house, and let it compost on your own and be done with it. like I said it does have manures in there so I don't have to add anything to the mushroom compost so if you like this video smash that subscribe button hit that like button hit that notification bell share this with as many people you can your friends and your family let YouTube know that there is quality content on this channel so they can help spread the word to other people and get some traction on this channel. I could really use your support. Thank you so much for joining me right now. I've got so much other things to do on my limited one day off, okay, that I'm gonna shoot, I think, three videos today. I have my trees that I got today that I'll be planting later on. Um, I still have to finish my raised garden beds and I got a video coming out on how to bird proof your backyard. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you come back for the next videos. I love you, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace out, homie.